scratching the collar of my neck where humans once had gills. Certainly it had a company that sweatshirt. But Idola is both ways concerned. Broken by enumeration, also used. The winner is to be announced at the World Awards. Divided into two sections, both secured by yet another lock. Important as it is, by my regular supervision. Furthermore, so too, for the travelers. It was a nightmare in their minds, a, a creature, creature from, from the, the darkest, darkest side of, of the, the intellect. intellect. Please, wait. So I do think language is primarily a tool for communication. And traditionally within computer science, within technology, that's all we use it for. But language has this very rich secondary power, which is a kind of social uh, glue. To hear about non-unit precision, contact speech synthesis administrators. Nuance is a company that's focused on the next generation of human-machine interactions. We're building new types of interfaces uh, for how users access information. And a big part of that is making these systems talk. A couple of decades ago when building a voice, you might have just wanted to guarantee coverage of all the individual phonemes of the language. Right? So a sound would be a t or g or a. The most technologically advanced Chrysler ever built. With electronics so advanced it even monitors itself. All monitored systems are functioning. The Chrysler New York. And so long as we had all of these different sounds represented, we could then cut these sounds up in different ways and reassemble them into whatever words and sentences we liked. You are right. Hello, I am Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. Co-articulation between sounds, which means that this precise sound you make when you say an ah varies depending on whether you're next going to say t or n, say. To be or not to be. That is the question. Hello, my name is Sam. I am a speech synthesizer on the disc. Mattel Electronics presents Long Squad. I'm Beauty. Who's out there? <laughs> Incredible. So, the, the, the speech organs of the mouth and throat move fluidly from one position to the next, meaning that you get this coloration from one sound to the next. So at the very least, we want to make sure the sound units contain sequences of sounds. So we want all possible combinations of, of two sounds. Just got a couple of, of uh, little things here on the first line, on the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. uh, looking for a little bit more clarity with community. Um, you know, there's the obvious things that that voice directors will, will pick up on a, a missed word, some gravel in the voice, there's noise. A typical voice project will last if, you know, we're on point about three, maybe four months. Let's, let's keep the same sort of energy and, and pace. The, the intonation, the speed at which people uh, speak, that carries most of the information. That's what's gonna tell you, first of all, somebody is sincere, if they're, if they're warm, what they're indicating, what they're trying to tell you. One, one. Two, two. Three, three. Hold on, I have to take a sip. <laughs> this is the exciting part. When I was younger, I, I waited tables in a really fancy restaurant where you had to read an endless list of specials. And I would get to the end and people would just look up at me and say, oh, you have such a nice voice. <laughs> okay, let's start over. What can I help you with? I was interested in um, becoming a broadcast journalist. So I was um, on the radio in college and then I got a job at the local public radio station in Philadelphia. So I was a reporter and a producer. The route has been changed due to updated traffic information. And then uh, someone ended up hiring me as a voice for a similar, similar project, and I suddenly was the voice of all the computers on like the third floor of the Museum of Natural History in New York, so that was kind of fun. Sarang means harmony of colors, signifying various social, religious, linguistic communities and their peaceful coexistence at coastal Karnataka. With nothing written in it, we can flash it. And I enjoy it. It's as big as you. Love him or loathe him, on Monday with it. Where Jemima was Saturday, there now lay a large bed. Thus, Je thus Jacoby's theory terminates in a finite, on the whole in finite steps. So these sentences, you can see, they don't really mean anything. 
they don't really trip off the tongue. And the talents do find them relatively hard to say. We tend to do several takes of a lot of these sentences. But they have the property that, because they contain these unusual words and these unusual combinations, we can cover more rare sound combinations faster and therefore with less material. This specific kind of work is really different. Something I said 12 years ago can be put in front of another phrase that I said last week and it should match. And so that's kind of a weird thing to, to learn how to do or to figure out how to do. Canceled. It's okay to change your mind. We try again. Canceled. It's okay to change your mind. A lot of the time what we're doing is intonation and the intonation on something going up or going down or going sort of in between, the, the, the meaning that comes from your intonation has to be very precise and exactly the same on each phrase. Usually an actor is called in to play a character or to be an announcer for a commercial for any number of things and what we're looking for here is for them to be themselves, which can be disarming for for actors who come in expecting to put on a mask. We say, no, 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 put the masks away. We want you to be you. You know, they hired me as me, you know, not just my, my voice or, the, or who I could pretend to be, but who I, who I really am because um, I have to sound the same for perhaps years. One billion, three billion and three. I love the fact that we're building something that potentially in 20 to 30 years is, is part of the building blocks for artificial intelligence and as a science fiction and technology buff, I think that that's really, really cool. Other people, like actors, would be totally bored and be driven crazy by this, but I, I see it as kind of like an interesting um, linguistic puzzle that it's fun to sort of be in the inside of. Uh, my name is de, a, v, i, de, t, i, p, o, David Tiepel. I'm a linguist at Nuance Communications, and I work on text-to-speech. So the sound files come to us from the studio. What we then need to do with them is to label them in various ways. We need to label them so that they can be stored in a database, and that database will then need to be accessed so we can build a TTS voice so that we can create new utterances, new text-to-speech utterances. This program that I'm using to show you this stuff is called PRAT, P-R-A-A-T. And Prot has various algorithms that just basically take this waveform and turn it into what's called a spectrogram. The labels that we need to apply to store it in that database are things like phonetic label, stress label, pitch labels. Because phonetic label, stress label, and pitch label are all relevant to which units get selected when, I, when we produce a new text-to-speech utterance. So yeah, in terms of the future, there are about 6,000 languages in the world. Probably something like a third of them are in danger. Some of them may only have a few hundred speakers, could be wiped out by a volcano, say. And that's happened before. A single volcano eruption has wiped out a language because all its speakers were below the volcano. In that case, it would be possible for us to create a TTS voice of that language. We would just have to know a great deal about it. We have to know all about its syntax, about its phonology, its phonetics, and so on. We have to have someone to produce it, at least, while it's still alive, even if only barely so that we have recordings like the ones you saw made uh, earlier. So it is possible to, to make an, uh, a voice so that we could actually preserve that language in some sense. What we have here is a Dragon Reader. Uh, it's a newsreader application. Really what it does is it reads the web to you. From The Verge, Gabriel Dishaw is an artist that uses discarded parts from typewriters, machines, and old computers to create some truly beautiful pieces of art including takes on several iconic characters from Star Wars. This is uh, the end result here is, is Allison's voice uh, synthesized. You've seen her uh, in action in the booth. And we're hearing true synthesis from the system where it's taking text and synthesizing human speech, ultimately to generate what we hope is a natural and compelling experience. As the product has been um, developing over a couple of years. At first we would try out a, a version of it and it would sound very mechanical, um, very much like the sort of computer voice that everybody hates. But now I've just heard an, the latest version and it, it's weird, it sounds like me. And for the first time now we're kind of entering an era where the technology that interacts with us using voice is trying to adapt to us and not the other way around. Where we don't have to put on a special voice 
to call a phone line and try to get a reservation where we can actually speak naturally and expect the system at the other end to understand us. And I think that's an exciting time to be working in this field. The Verge.